Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 356 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. I'm feeling very frustrated if I'm going to be real with you. Getting straight into it, I've, I've, I'm so annoyed at all of these tech companies and their planned obsolescence. When's the last time you bought a piece of technology that you are planning to use for years and it actually lasts years, especially smartphones? They all slow down or they start to die within about 18 months of you buying them. It's ridiculous and it should be illegal. Perfect example. This is what I've been dealing with for the last few months, right? A couple months ago, my phone gets some malware on it. So I got to get rid of it. All right. I get, I get malware on my smartphone. So I, 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 I cut, I got to get rid of it. So then I go out and I buy a pager. So me and my boys can talk. All right. Uh, I have this pager for a couple of months. It's great. I start telling all my boys to get the pager. They start getting the pager. We have a great time, right? Anyway, a couple of days ago, I'm in the shower. The thing fucking explodes, all right? Rest in peace to my niece. She heard it ring. She was bringing it over to me so I could check my pager. She's died. Rest in peace to her. But more importantly, my page is fucking blowing up. So then I get out of the shower, right? The wife is screaming. And I gotta, I gotta, I'm thinking, how am I going to tell my boys? I go... You know, to grab my walkie-talkie, I'm calling my boys on the walkie-talkie. All of their pages have fucking blown up too. So now we're considering a class action lawsuit against this company that's made these faulty pages, right? So I'm using my walkie-talkie. I use that not even 24 hours. I haven't even used this walkie-talkie much. I've had it for 24 hours. I put it down on the couch. I go to the fridge to get myself a, a, a drink. It fucking blows up on the couch. It kills the dog. Now I got to cremate the dog, all right? The wife is devastated again. She hasn't even gotten over the niece. I'm thinking, how the fuck am I even going to talk to my boys? The page is gone. The phone's fucked. The walkie-talkie blew up. The dog's dead. So then I'm thinking, oh, my God, I got to go and get on the internet. I go on the internet, all right? The power in the house goes out, okay? Because my, the fucking solar panel on my roof just overheats, blows up. The house is burnt down. The only way I can go and talk to my boys now is when I'm using the Wi-Fi at the hospital. That's, I forgot to say, the wife has been blinded because she found my second pager that I used to, to, to beep the hose on. She was looking at that. I must have got a text that was particularly spicy from one of my hoes. It's blown up in her face. She's been blinded. I don't know if she's going to, if she's going to make it, but more importantly, I, I don't have any way to talk to my boys and hang out with my boys anymore. All right. And let me tell you something. I started doing a little bit of research into, into some of these companies, all right? And who owns these companies? And you won't be surprised to know it's the usual suspects that are, that are running these companies and selling these pages to my friends. And now I'm feeling socially isolated and annoyed because I, I don't have a phone. I don't have a pager. My walkie-talkie's fucked. The house is burnt down. I can't even play with the dog. I mean, I don't have to listen to the wife nag and the niece wanting to hang out with me. So that's that's good. But, you know, I don't even want to touch my Kindle because I don't know what's going to happen. I don't trust technology anymore. I'm going to have to go back to normal books. I don't want to do that. Sorry, it's just been a very tough few months for me and, and all my friends, you know? You think you're going to get a text from one of the boys like an edgy meme from the group chat. Next thing you know, your testicles have exploded at the supermarket. It's just been a very stressful time for me and my friends. And I don't, I'm venting. I'm sorry. Because another problem is, all right, and you've probably seen this on Twitter a lot. A lot of people on Twitter are complaining about uh, a lack of men's spaces. All right. There's a lot of discourse around, oh, men's spaces, all right, and men's mental health. I saw someone say, men's mental health matters. And then another popular female influencer said, well, if men's mental health mattered to men, they would set up their own spaces, all right? And then a very brave men's rights activist said, well, we did try to set up our own spaces. This is a real tweet. All right, let me get the let me get the tweet that I'm referencing here. I have a I I borrowed a phone from a from an from an Israeli friend and it's been working fine so far. I don't know what what's wrong with all of my other phones and 
my friend's phones. Um, but this one seems to be working fine. Um, although it gets really hot whenever I use it. But I, I don't know. I'm sure it'll be fine. It's, it's worth it to look at Twitter. Um, anyway, let me find this tweet that I'm referencing. Um, all right. I'm scrolling down here. Okay, here we go. Right? So... <clears throat> This initially started off by someone saying men's mental health matters six times in a row. All right. Men's mental health matters. And then a woman said this, uh, Denisha Carter. She said, if men's mental health mattered to men, they would be creating safe spaces for themselves and each other, pursuing therapy, creating community. Instead, they perpetuate the behavior systems that have handicapped them in the first place, refuse to support or create community amongst each other, severely damage the women in their lives who try to care for them and attack women online for not doing the work for them in replies to the tweets like the one below. Well, me and a few of my boys tried to set up a community using our brand new pages, but look how that went. Anyway, I'm getting off topic. This man, all right, a, a very brave men's rights activist said, men had Star Wars, women invaded. Men had sci-fi, women invaded. Men had video games, women invaded. Men had Dungeons and Dragons, women invaded. Men had comics, women invaded. Men had men's only clubs, women invaded. The only thing that men have anymore is either solitary or you fuss at us for. That's right, okay? All of these... All of these women, all right, and mental health experts telling men who are struggling with suicidal ideation, all right, to go to therapy or work on themselves or untangle their trauma. No, what you need to do is read a comic book without any hose around. That's men's mental health, all right? If there's one thing that makes a man mentally healthy, it's science fiction with no pussy. Is this guy fucking retarded? Men had sci-fi, women invaded. What does that even mean, brother? If you go, oh, I'm depressed, and and I would be happy if only there were Star Wars without any fucking whores in it. You're an idiot, all right? You're never going to be happy. You're not depressed because women also like video games. You're depressed because you're a fucking loser freak who lets the presence of a woman playing the Nintendo disrupt your emotional equilibrium so much that you start tweeting insane shit like men had Dungeons and Dragons, women invaded. These are not male interest, all right? Comic books, that's a fucking medium. That's a, that's a hobby, all right? Comic books were never for men. They, they just naturally attracted more men than women. In the same way that, like, fucking knitting is not for, for women. It, it's just they, more of them gravitated towards it. And women aren't out there going, oh, you know what makes, you know what keeps me mentally healthy? The saddle club. That's a fucking interest, brother. If you are going to a fucking Xbox console thinking, oh, this will make me happy. You fucking lost, dude. You don't know how to make yourself happy and you're taking those frustrations out on women. You're a fucking incel, brother. This shit is so fucking crazy. Like, also, like, people are like, oh, men used to have comic books, but then women invaded. Just hang out with men and talk about Batman. And don't invite a woman. Problem solved. Fix it. Oh, men used to be happy when there were men's only clubs. Go to a bar and don't invite chicks. What's stopping you from doing that? Why don't you go out at night and not sexually harass any of the women there? And then you'll be happy, right? No. You'll find some other fucking reason to blame your depression on women being whores. You're a loser. You're a fucking dork. If you, as a man, blame your mental health on women, you're a fucking loser. And you're the problem. And you'll never be happy with a mindset like that. I'm telling you, bro. You've got to work on you. 
And no, working on finding happiness isn't reading a fucking science fiction book. That's not, that's a hobby. And the hobbies are great and interests are incredibly important for mental health to pursue. But I'm not happy because I like to fucking read One Piece, all right? That, that's a thing that I enjoy doing, but it doesn't, like, I'm not happy because fucking Oda Ichiro writes a, a good new fucking Luffy comic book. I'm happy because I chase fulfillment in my life and I work on myself and I try to build a life that I'm actually comfortable existing within. All right, and I try to eliminate things that make me unhappy. And unfortunately, women are not something that can make you unhappy. 50% of the population, that's why you're sad. Well, you have a very big task in front of you. Not even, not even the most genocidal motherfucker on earth was like, we need to get rid of 50%. Then you'll be happy. You know, it would really, and also that's so fucking crazy as well, right? For a straight guy to be saying, right? Uh, here's example for me. I love comic books. I love uh, reading science fiction. I love Warhammer 40,000. You know what would really make me happy? If I could find a, a partner that didn't give a fuck about any of that stuff. Are you fucking stupid? What do you think would make a better like relationship a woman who whenever you go downstairs to read comic books is like oh what a fucking loser he's reading those comic books again yuck that's what you want or do you want someone to be like what's superman up to baby wow oh that lex luther he's a tr he's a tricky one there's nothing better than sitting across from a woman on the same couch in silence, both reading your books. There's one thing better, but we don't need to get into that. Men's mental health is not doing a leisure activity. I feel like that's men get so fucking confused where they're like, oh, doing this thing that distracts me from how fucking dejected and depressed I am is what makes me happy. No, brother, that's a hobby. And hobbies are fun and hobbies are interesting. And if you're incredibly lucky and skilled and blessed and, uh, and consistent and hardworking, you might even be able to turn that hobby and passion into a career. But that is not what makes you happy. I'm not happy because for fucking eight hours a day, I sit down at my computer and edit a YouTube video. I am like connected with my community. I'm connected with humans around me. I have a beautiful dog that I take care of. I'm a, I'm a foster father. I'm, I'm, I'm in my son's life. I am connected with my mother and my father. I'm like plugged into the, the beautiful network of, human souls around me and I'm participating in what it means to be a human being and if you look at 50% of the population with bitterness and hatred because six of them were mean to you and one bitch cheated on you when you were in university you will never be happy because you have poisoned your perception of half the fucking planet how the fuck could you be happy if 50% of the people piss you off that's a problem within your soul that you got to fix brother and this does apply to women as well women do this with men too because they've been hurt by men all right but let's be real if you're looking at 50 percent of the population and going oh without them i'd be happy uh without you everyone else would be happier you're the fucking problem all right if women don't like you they are right if you don't like women, you are wrong. Now, that might sound pretty confusing, but let's fucking have a look at that statement, all right? If women don't like you and you know they don't like you, that's a problem with your behavior, your thoughts, your actions, all right? If you don't like women, that's impossible. You haven't met all of them. You haven't interacted with all of them. You're fucking 
poisoning your own thoughts and you're you're ruining your own chance at being happy, all right? Men and women are incredibly different and a lot of frustration arises from that. But those differences is what make us such a fucking good team if you can find the right one that meshes and props up your weaknesses while you solidify hers, all right? That's the world, baby, okay? And there are plenty of fucking dudes that I've met that I haven't liked or that I have liked that have fucked me over, but I haven't gone, oh, men are bad. I've just gone, oh, well, that fucking set of behaviors and red flags that I saw and decided to tolerate anyway because I didn't think that if the roles were reversed, I would treat them like that, uh, got me hurt. And that's a lesson that I have to take. Um. And dude, and, and yeah, all right, I understand all the fucking, the insult. listen, 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 bro. I didn't always have this chin, all right? So this, I thought this when I was so ugly that a surgeon had to intervene and when I was broke and when I wasn't successful in a public field, all right? And yes, as I've become more attractive, as I've become more successful, as I've become more uh, influential and this, this perceived social status has grown, which is all mostly just smoking fucking mirrors. M many, 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 many more women have started to pay more attention, but you know who else has men as well? Straight dudes too. All right. That's human beings, dude. And it's your job to fucking weed out those things. And also if you as an ugly, broke, unsuccessful motherfucker, is whining that women only like you when you're successful. Well, you don't even have to fucking worry about that because that's on you. That's not you. So you need to figure out how to fucking connect with hum half of humanity at the level that you're at and improve yourself and you'll find someone. So anyway, I fucking filled out the warranty for this pager. Um... But I have to email it to this the fucking CEO of the company, and this can't be right. It's it says the CEO is Benjamin Netanyahu. I thought he was, I thought that guy had a different job. I I feel like I must have I've Googled something, and I've and I found the wrong help email. So I'm gonna have to figure something else out. Also, I don't even know how to send an email. Like me and the boys were talking in person, obviously, because that's the only way we can communicate now. Uh, my mate Abdullah, he's. He's getting a carrier pigeon organized, but I swear, dude, some some guy who I'd never I'd never met before. All right, he's he's he said his name was was uh, was Michael Goldstein. He sold my mate like six hundred pigeons, carrier pigeons, already trained, which is super convenient. But I swear, dude, it's not all the time. But when my mate Abdullah feeds his car new carrier pigeons that he got from his good friend, Mr. Goldstein, every now and then I swear one of them beeps. And not like a, not like a, a pigeon cooing. I swear to God I've heard a beep. So either, you know, these pigeons are like robotic or something, or one of them has eaten... A smoke detector that hasn't had its batteries changed for a while. I don't know what's going on there. I don't trust that I'm sticking to in-person conversations. Also, I need to uh, address something. Obviously, Keelan is not here. Um, and this is something that I'm not proud of. And it's not something that I ever like to do when it comes to this, this stuff. But... Um, we all make mistakes and I'm certainly not perfect and I know that you're not and I would say that perhaps the least perfect person on earth is Keelan but I still think that we should extend grace to people when they make mistakes um, and that's why Keelan has taken a break from this show. Obviously, this is going very viral on Twitter. Um, the footage of it is horrific uh, and it's not something that I can defend, but I hope that it's something that in time, if Keelan can uh, come to the table, hopefully he can make amends for it. And it's not something that you can ever undo, but 
Jesus Christ preaches forgiveness and that's all that I can do. Hate the sin, love the sinner. And and I I love my friend Keelan and it will be hard to um, reconcile the, f- the person that I know Keelan is with the things that he has done on live stream. Um, but I believe that, that I believe in forgiveness and I believe in grace and everyone makes mistakes. Now, when Keelan was in America on his last trip, uh, there were a few incidents with uh, homeless and mentally vulnerable people that, I would describe as funny. Other people would describe as uh, barbaric and unnecessarily violent. But anyway, that's just conjecture, and I'm not going to get into he said, sh- he-, he said, they said, and and uh, and there's police reports that that you can go into that are multiple pages long. But anyway, what I'm trying to say is, after Keelan fled the United States, he came back to Australia. As we know. Australia does have uh, an extradition deal with the United States and um, a big part of getting Julian Assange, the whistleblower, uh, to be freed was uh, what we call a swap in uh, global political diplomacy. It's uh, a prisoner swap. So... Obviously, Julian Assange is one of the biggest criminals on earth from the point of view of the United States, okay? Founder of WikiLeaks, exposed a lot of war crimes, leaked a lot of secrets, right? Um, I personally think he's a freedom fighter. The the United States thinks he's a criminal, right? Um, So to be able to secure the freedom of Julian Assange, we had to give up uh, someone arguably worse, and that was Keelan. Now, we didn't talk about this on the podcast because it was meant to be a secret, but now that he's not here, I can start to reveal these details. Uh, what happened was we, Australia, me and Anthony Albanese said, we'll give you Keelan if you give us Julian. The The United States said yes, Um Keelan was not happy with this, but his hands were tied. So he was due to be extradited to the United States for the crimes that he did commit on those live streams that uh, I believe you can see on Rumble. Uh, And uh, also uh, playing, uh, they've got a kick secured a a deal to replay those uh, and and they're sponsored by Stake. I think Drake watches them every now and then. Um, Anyway... Keelan obviously wasn't happy about this extradition deal. As Julian Assange got uh, organized to be shipped back, Julian is here and we're very happy about that. I think it was a good trade. Keelan, however, I don't know how he did it. He actually booked a flight to the UK and he's currently on the run from uh, the United States and Australian federal police uh, trying to prevent him from being extradited to the US. So... If you have a look at his Instagram, you can actually see uh, the the lengths that he's doing to hide from the authorities. And you can also see that he is continuing to commit some of the acts that got him in trouble in the United States. Now, currently, he's not part of the Spearhead Sundays podcast, like he just kind of hangs out here with friends. I'm trying to distance myself because some of the stuff that he's, that he's done, um, I mean, it, they, they would make Tommy Robinson cry, right? So I just wanted to say that um, I haven't heard from Keelan in a while. I've been trying to get onto him, but obviously all my pages are out. The walkie talkie doesn't reach that far. And I only get Wi-Fi when I'm at the hospital. And when I'm at the hospital, the wife wants to talk to me about some of the 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 beeps that she saw on the pager before it blew up and blinded her. Thank thank God. Um, So I haven't spoken to him too much, but uh, you can all follow along on his social media on uh, on Instagram and you can see uh, the the lengths he's going to to avoid capture by uh, the uh, international 
uh, spy agency ASIO in Australia and also the FBI. And I think the CIA is involved. Um, anyway, I uh, probably should move on here. Um, I a little bit of an update about me. As you all know, I, I'm, a, I'm a father. I'm a foster father. I've got my son. Uh, and uh, listen, now, as you know, I've never really been into sports, okay? My son loves basketball, okay? He loves basketball and he's really fucking good, all right? He's really good. So what I've done is I have tried my best to understand basketball so that I can communicate with my child because that's something that my father didn't do with World of Warcraft, which arguably would, be, have, would have been impossible for him pre-internet. And even now, all right, he like he's he 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 just worked out the iPad and he just uses it to look at Facebook news that isn't true. Um, but you know, I've decided I'm going to learn about basketball because my son cares about basketball. And you know what? I've watched a few games. I don't understand the rules beyond ball in hoop means point. Unless you throw the ball from behind one of the lines, that could be three points. Sometimes you get two points. I don't know why you get two versus one. All I know is that there is the three line. And if you shoot from behind there, that's a three. I'm six foot eight and I don't understand the rules of basketball, but I'm trying my best for my son. Anyway, the reason I'm saying this is because my son who I'm very proud of, made it to the grand final of the under-18s basketball league that he's in. Okay. Actually, how's this? He's in two teams. He had a grand final yesterday. He's got another one on the weekend. Grand final, two teams. All right? That's my boy. Anyway, I go to the grand final. All right? And I went to his semi-final. You know, just in case he lost. And he won that one. I'm like, let's fucking, let's fucking go. Grand final. Okay, now I have seen all the videos of those parents that are at sports matches that are just watching their children. You know, they're like seven-year-old playing baseball. And like you watch the video, it's just like a bunch of kids bumping into each other and rolling around. They can barely run. They're just having fun. They're just happy to be there out in the sun away from the fucking iPad that their mum throws at them. All right. But you see these, some of these parents are just fucking frothing at the mouth. Just it, like, it's the most important thing that they've ever, like it's way more important to them than it is to their own child to the point where they'll scream so much at the ref that it gets them banned from the game, them and their child. Right now. I, I used to see those videos and I would laugh and I would go, what kind of fucking lunatic idiot parent is, you know, is so invested in, in their child's game that they would risk getting their child and them banned from the events. Like, that's fucking crazy. Then I attended my son's grand final. I was up there going, that, that's bullshit, ref. That's fucking bullshit. I don't even know the rules. That's, no, that's a foul. They fouled my son. I don't even understand how you can get fouled in, in a game, you know? My son fucking shoots a half-court shot. I've got, that's my boy. That's right. Let's fucking go. I know I'm screaming. I'm fucking into it. I feel like I was more excited than he was. You know? I was fucking, I was frothing at the, at the bit. People next to me are going, dude, sit down. I can't see. Fuck you. That's my boy. Let's go. <laughs> no, I could. I'm obviously joking. I managed to contain myself, but up here I was like fucking, I was locked in. I've never been so locked into a sport that I understand 30% of the rules of. Dude, I'm telling you, every time the ref did something, I had no idea what was going on. All right. All I understand is when one team has the ball, they're trying to bounce it over that way and get it in the hoop. And then the other team is trying to grab it and get it in their hoop. Totally get that. But 
every time the ref blew the whistle, I was like, what the fuck is going on? Fouls were getting called. I remember, like, dude, this is how this is how fucking invested in it I was with with and how little understanding of the game and the rules that I have. All right, my boy is about to fucking score, or that's what it looks like from me, right? From my point of view, he's near the hoop, he's about to score. Ref calls a foul. I'm like, that's bullshit. That's not a-. anyway. Uh, he got fouled, so he got to. <laughs> So he got to fucking shoot. His team got to shoot fouls. So I'm going, oh, that's bullshit, Rev. Oh, no way. That's good. Whenever something good happens to my team, good call, Rev. Whenever something good happens to their team, this Rev sucks. That's how you watch sport. I get it now. Every time something that unfavorable happens, the Rev's an idiot. Every time something good happens, the Rev's a genius. And that's how you watch sport. Bro, I was pacing like some of these fucking NBA coaches you watch on TV. Don't even know the rules. But you know what? He won. That's right. That's my boy. One grand final down. He's got another one coming up. And I and I don't and I don't need him to win because it's it's just a game and it's all about improving and becoming better and persevering no matter what happens. I just hope everyone has fun. I just hope both teams have fun. Dude, I was, I was fucking, I was losing it. I think I have footage. I'm not going to play the footage cause I don't, you can listen to it cause I don't post kids online. Um, where is it? I was okay. This is this is them winning. I was I was going nuts, man. I was loving it. I was loving it. So yeah, look. That's what I've realized. Maybe I don't like the NBA. Maybe I only like watching the under 18s. That's not a sentence that you want out of the internet. (laughs) So I'm very proud of my boy. Fucking grand final winner, dude. I'm so, I'm so very, very proud of how far he's come from when we took him in a couple years ago. Um, From... From, from where he was, where when we got him and took him in and from how hard he's worked and come from where he was to where he is now, it makes me want to cry because I look at that boy and I remember I've known him almost his whole life and I remember where he was when we first took him in and now he's fucking winning grand finals and I'm not and that's it. I'm not going to cry on the podcast, but I'm very proud of my boy. Um, all right. I need to move on here or that, or that's, or I'm going to lose it. Uh, oh, I've got an, I've, okay. Here's, here's the thing. All right. I forgot to say you should buy the merch. All right. We've got, we've got loosespears.com. Okay. Uh, Spears Pizza Parlor is officially open. Loosebears.com. We've got a pre-order up. It's uh, We've got a t-shirt. We've got a lapel pin. It's the best design we've ever made. It's the first time we've actually worked with proper professional merch designers to create a t-shirt. I can't believe it's taken me this long to actually do that, but we have, and it's my favorite bit of merch we've ever done. The only merch we've ever made for the Spearheads on this podcast to celebrate Uh, Never missing a single episode in the history of this show. What an achievement. 350 episodes without missing a single one. On-time delivery every single time. That's the Spears Pizza Parlor guarantee. Uh, And uh, we've only got... I think it's uh, only available till the 30th. So I think we've got this episode. And then next episode, I believe, will be the final day that you... When's the 30th? Oh, we've got... The 30th, yeah, all right. So the 29th is next Sunday. So this episode, next episode, then they're gone. And that's the pre-order closing. So these are the last two weeks you can uh, order the shirt. We've also 
Thanks to uh, a brilliant suggestion by a Patreon supporter in the Discord, we're doing magnets, right? Like classic pizza shop magnets. You know, the magnets that you would get for your pizza shop? We uh, got that idea and we thought it was so good. We've made them. If you've already ordered your shirts, check your emails. We've sent out a link to a discounted magnet. If you haven't uh, ordered anything, the magnet and some stickers is, uh, is on there as a new product and you can grab them all together without adding to your shipping if you've already bought one or if you haven't bought one, you can grab them all together. You'll charge you one shipping price. Uh, but we're very happy with uh, the magnet. But what's really cool about this, this is such a cool idea. So you know how pizza shops, they've got their phone number, all right? We're getting our own phone number that you can actually call the pizza shop that will be printed exclusively on the magnet. We haven't revealed it, all right? So that the image, the image that's on the website right now is just a little mock-up with the phone number, but the phone number on the design will change. Everything else will be the same, but the phone number will change to an actual phone number that you can actually call to ring the pizza shop that you can only see if you have the magnet. All right, that's it. Loosebeers.com, grab your merch. Now, uh, what else has been happening? Oh, I'm making, I'm, I'm, I've, I've had a lot of time to think while I was away, touring and everything like that. And uh, after, uh, well, with the reality show that happened this year and all this other stuff, and uh, I've been thinking a lot about what I want to do from now until I start touring next year. I'm, I'm doing it. I'm doing a big swing for YouTube, man. I'm just going to spend the next six months doing a fucking huge swing just focusing on YouTube. I'm going to do YouTube videos, all right? And I'm going to do a big swing because I'm thinking, what do I need to bring the team back on board, all right? What do I need to be able to doing all the, do all these stand-up clips and all these real talks and all these other pieces of content and to be doing the podcast and the podcast clips and uh, and to also be doing YouTube? How, how do I build that up again? And it's like YouTube ad revenue and brand sponsorships. If I can bring that up, I'll be able to bring back editors and I'll be able to do everything else. Everything will grow from the tree trunk that is YouTube and YouTube videos, all right? So I'm thinking that's how the podcast is going to grow as well because if my YouTube is getting 100 to 200,000 views a video, those people are going to trickle over to this. That's going to grow this. That's going to grow the Patreon. That's going to grow the budget. That's going to be able to pay editors to make more YouTube videos, which will grow the podcast, which will grow the Patreon, which will grow the budget, which will uh, enable us to make more stand-up clips, which will grow everything and it'll just feed itself. And that'll help us sell more tickets and that'll help us do more stand-up shows and that'll help us do shows in the States and Europe and UK and Australia and everything. I th I'm, I'm going back to the foundation of this thing that I've managed to build and the business and I've looked at it all and I've gone... What this thing needs is like energy in the form of money because I don't care about money to spend it on myself. I just want to fucking pay my bills, buy food, and once a week I like buying a comic book. Everything else I don't give a fuck about. Everything else I just want to build like the fucking A-team up again, all right? And the two ways that I get money is like tickets or YouTube ad revenue and Patreon, all right? And I'm thinking, well, I only tour like once a year and if I'm not popping on all these big platforms, the, that money won't grow at the rate that I think that it could. So if I can do the YouTube thing properly, that will grow. You guys can share my shit. Help us build it. The podcast grows. The Patreon grows. Everything gets fucking bigger. Uh, and all of the other little pieces of content that really blow you up come with that too. So that's kind of what I've really been thinking about these last few months of like, okay, I've done these tours. They've gone really well. Uh, I've been healthy now for, fuck, I was, look, I was looking at it. it. Hasn't even been a year, dude. All this stuff that we've managed to do together, I haven't even been healthy for a year. It's spitting me out. Because in my head, I'm like, I started these surgeries years ago, which is true. But I'm like, so I, I, I kind of like, because I write, uh, I've got a five-year journal. So every entry that I write, there's an entry before it from 365 days ago. You know where I was 365 days ago? I need to post about this. Right now, today, 365 days ago or yesterday, I'm 
in a bed on OxyContin recovering from the second surgery that I just got that just resolved my issues. And I still have months of recovery ahead of me. And that made me realize, oh, fuck, dude. I haven't even been doing my job for a year. And we've done all of these amazing things and made all of these cool things and toured in the UK and done all this crazy stuff. We haven't missed a podcast episode since I started doing it again. It's like so fucking amazing. And I'm very, very, very blessed and grateful. Like I only got my braces off in March and I'm like, because there was part of me that was like, oh man, things aren't moving fast enough. Blah, 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 and I'm worried about this and that. And I just kind of took a step back and I was like, dude, I'm actually fucking killing it. All I need is with the online thing to pick one thing and do it consistently. And that could be TikTok and I would smash that, but TikTok makes no money. What I really need is like fucking cash and that's YouTube. And I love doing YouTube and I can do it really funny. I think what I can do, and you're going to see me do it, I'm looking at all of these big commentary cha YouTube channels. This is similar to like when I started Lou Review back in fucking whenever I started it, but when it was really pumping in 2018, 2019, I looked at all these other YouTubers that are doing commentary videos and talking about trending topics and news and shit. And I'm like, these videos are interesting, but none of these people are funny and they're all treating it way too seriously. So this is what you're going to see over the next couple months. All right. And I've just put out a video uh, on that schoolboy nine kid or whatever the fuck it is. Smart schoolboy nine. I'm going to do commentary YouTube as funny as it can possibly be without taking it as seriously as all of these other fucking YouTubers that treat it like it's true crime. I reckon I can fuse like I've done before the energy and the punchiness and the humor and the, and, and the attitude of stand up comedy, the way that I do it with the YouTube algorithm and commentary. And I think I can fuse them because I think those are two very different audiences that are just prime for meshing because there are a lot of people like me that, you know, genuinely fucking get a kick out of keeping up with all this YouTube drama and trending internet news and, and like you, but can't fucking consume it in this serious, boring fucking guy with a with a wearing a, a flannel shirt with a mustache and a mullet wearing women's jewelry <laughs> way that it's presented like fucking ugh, I can't tell a joke or if I do I got to apologize for it that's all boring so anyway all of this to say I'm taking a big swing at YouTube over the next few months like we have with the podcast we've got the podcast running I think it's really good we've been doing it every single fucking week the Patreon is growing uh, the podcast is growing. Now I'm going to apply that same attitude to YouTube. We're just going to pump it out. I'm working with a few different people. I've got a couple people helping me, advising me, helping me make thumbnails. And and what you're going to see is I'm just going to attack the fucking YouTube commentary space. And I'm going to package all of my videos like these YouTubers, but I'm going to do them in a very different way. And I, my, my theory is I will be able to ride the wave that all of these other YouTubers are currently creating and I'll be able to take a lot of their momentum, welcome it into what we're doing and really show the difference in humor and ability to be funny between me and a lot of these commentary guys because I can't compete with these commentary guys with like consistency and like being as tapped in and, and being as on time, like I'm never going to be that trending topic guy that's first to all of the news and all that kind of shit. What I can do is quality and, uh, and funny. I can fucking nail that. Uh, and so that's the theory is just every, you know, three to, to five days, a new video about the fucking trending thing. And I'm just going to go all in on whatever's trending on the website so that we can get the views back up. And, and when the views are back up, then I'm going to start taking a few more risks and making those videos that are, that, that are like more exciting creatively to me. Um, but less so 
less uh, enticing to the YouTube algorithm. So, yeah, I'm just keeping you guys in the loop because I know you guys like um, hearing the behind the scenes stuff and like what my plans are and watching me attempt to execute them and all that kind of stuff. Um, so that's what I'm doing. How can you help? I hear you ask. Like the videos, comment on the videos, uh, engage with them. When you see them in your recommended, click on them. Uh, write comments that that are like actually to do with the video. Uh, engage with it. And um, I think that'll make a big difference. Share them in group chats and all that kind of stuff. But but really when you see these videos, I get you don't, not everyone wants to share videos. Like and engage with them. If there's a, you know, there's like fucking seven to 10,000 people that listen to this podcast every week. If every video that goes up gets fucking hundreds or a thousand comments and likes like within the first day from you guys, that tells YouTube, fuck, this is a hot one. Let's push it. Let's put it in everyone's face. I think all I need is like two to three months of just fucking uploading every, like as twice a week if I can of like proper YouTube shit that the algorithm wants. Then people are going to be like, fuck, this guy's the funniest. He knows what he's doing. And then YouTube's going to be like, dude, this guy's getting a lot of engagement, a lot of views. Let's fucking push him out and then we're off because that's all I need is just to get back in that algorithm again because I feel like YouTube has for years I've been so inconsistent that YouTube's like all right well this guy's got a lot of subscribers but like you know he posts and disappears so we'll show his videos to his subscribers but you know it's not in our best interest to show him to fucking everyone if I can just do this for two three months in a row keep it up I reckon bang we're gonna be back baby um and yeah, then the podcast will grow. We'll make podcast clips. I just feel like I've got something that can really work. I've got an idea. I've got a hypothesis. And you and me, we're going to execute that together. All right. How long have we got? Okay. Oh, we got a bit of time. What else happened? Oh, okay. Dude, this stuff with Diddy is crazy, man. The more I read about Diddy and the charges that have been laid on this dude and the rumors that are flying around the entertainment industry and the celebrities that have had to distance themselves or go to ground because of how close they were, what other celebrities who have seen stuff and left early have, have said, all of this stuff, like, Diddy seemed to be like the black Jeffrey Epstein. They raided this guy's house and found 1,000 bottles of baby oil. <laughs> A thousand bottles of baby oil. Bro, what do you, what do you, what the fuck do you reckon his house smells like? Have you ever spilled lube on fabric before? It never comes out. Who are his cleaners? Who's, who's cleaning that place? A thousand bottles of baby oil. Where do you keep a thousand bottles of anything? What kind of compound does this guy have? Most rich people I know who've got mansions, they've got a wine cellar. This guy's got a baby oil cellar. And he has his own cognac, so he's probably got a cognac cellar next to the baby oil cellar next to a soundproof cellar he hosts the freak parties in. Dude. Everything I read about him, he seems to be the black Jeffrey Epstein. Right down to the point where he's been arrested now. They're holding him in custody. He's being filmed. He's on suicide watch. Dude, if I was Diddy, I would be screaming, don't turn them off. Keep the cameras on. If you need any help with keeping secret cameras recording, just ask. I know a lot about this stuff. You know, how does it feel, Diddy? Now you're the one locked in a cage being filmed 24-7. Yeah, man, I feel like the, it's, I, I don't know. I feel like that what's happening right now, like with the Epstein stuff, the Diddy stuff, I feel like this is still a big flow on effect from the Me Too movement. Because the Me Too movement really kind of kicked off this, because it was always like these conspiracies of these all oh, these fucking crazy sex parties that happen in Hollywood and people getting taken advantage of and exploited and all this kind of stuff. 
But it really was like women that kind of kicked this off in into like women that were that came out and said it's happened to me and all of these friends and we're coming out and we're saying it and that guy did it and this guy did it and she knew about it and she helped him do it and I feel like that whole movement kind of going public and and becoming unfortunately a monetizable topic by the media the media worked out that oh we can actually make more money out of exposing this stuff than we can out of keeping it a secret because we like doing it right so as soon as the media were like oh fuck this is profitable to write about these fucking creeps and freaks then the law enforcement was like oh well we've been getting reports about this we might as well do something about it finally and then the flow-on effect of it is like epstein and now diddy right but what's interesting about this diddy stuff is it seems like lots and lots of male victims that probably due to stigma aren't willing to come forward uh because of the damage or the perceived damage that it would do to their reputation especially because it happens to like you know obviously a lot of black guys um and women too but uh from what I'm reading it sounds like the uh the go-to method and it's again it sounds very Jeffrey Epstein right but it's just not happening on an island and uh yeah Diddy invites you to his house for a party then they they bring in like hundreds of sex workers many of whom are allegedly trafficked some potentially underage he gets everyone drunk not only does he do that people's drinks get spiked allegedly by him or people around him or whatever now you're drunk now you're on drugs you've been fucking roofied he gets the prostitutes to have sex with you it's all on camera you wake up the next day, oh my God, I just cheated on my wife. Holy shit, Diddy's got it on camera. I got to do him a favor. That seems like the MO of this dude. And that's very Epstein as well. Oh fuck, this guy's got me on camera doing very illegal stuff on an island. I owe him a favor, several favors. And Epstein's favors eventually ran out, as seemingly have Diddy's. And where the lasting effect of the fallout of Epstein, the the fallout of that is, oh my God, how deep does this corruption go? How many celebrities, politicians, world leaders were going to this island and taking advantage of girls? How was Epstein killed? This has obviously got to be some sort of inside job. The world is so much darker than what I thought it was. The fallout from Harvey Weinstein is much more positive. Women standing together and saying, we're not going to let this happen to us anymore. Men coming out and standing with those women and, and calling out that behavior when they see it disgusting producers directors actors who took advantage of women and gay men to give them roles are getting ousted from industry and blacklisted and in some cases facing charges being sued but it seems that the only fallout from diddy going down is everyone calling meek mill gay on instagram <laughs> that seems to be the only lasting impact is, ah, Meek Mill, you're gay. That's disheartening, isn't it? You know, we th we we thought that we we under uh, uncovered the the biggest sex trafficking ring in in the music business. No one cares. They just think it's funny to call Meek Mill gay because his music isn't as good as it used to be. <laughs> and I think. That is why probably a lot of black guys who are victims aren't going to come forward because they know they're not going to get much sympathy and they're going to get a lot more jokes. Uh.
Oh, man. Anyway, what the fuck? I've written something down. What the fuck does that say? B-I-O-D-Y. Oh, that says Diddy. Right. We're, we've already done that. Um, J.K. Rowling's uh, apparently writing a new book. I read in the news, J.K. Rowling is now writing a new book. Finally. Some real entertainment coming. I'm sick of all these walking in a... I'm sick of walking into bookstores and all I see in the best-selling section is fucking fairy porn. I thought that all of... Honestly... All these Sarah J. Maz books that were coming into bookstores, I thought all these women were getting into fantasy. I thought, oh no, women getting into fantasy. I like to read fantasy. These whores are going to make me depressed. Women getting involved in an interest that I have, that's going to make me kill myself and that's their fault. Because chicks suck. (laughs) I thought all these women were getting into reading so that they could read fantasy books Like I read fantasy books, books about heroes conquering empires, defeating evil lords, taming dragons, learning magic, holding a a sword that burns white hot and makes you angry and and, and, uh, the sword of truth. I write wizards that cast flaming balls of liquid fire, horrifically melting their enemies. Overcoming vastly superior military forces using guerrilla warfare tactics. Saving the world from dark magic and living in peace forever. Apparently, it's how they're actually reading books about vampires with 12 inches digging down nurses. Bookstores are just fucking porno mags all over again. These chicks are reading smart. It's porn. You're not into reading. You have a porn addiction. If you're sitting there staring at a Kindle and your pussy's dripping, it's not reading. It's porn. God bless you. I love it. And it's and it's your right. But, th- but I'm sick of walking into bookstores... And seeing porn on the bestseller's shelf. I almost bought one of these fucking disgusting books. I thought it was about dragons and wizards. I love that stuff. No. It's about getting locked into a dungeon and fucked by a a wizard. You can read it, but it's time to call it what it is. It's porn. I don't know, man. I just, I just feel like maybe I'm, I'm not a, I'm not a fucking, you know me. I love sex workers. I'm all about it. I love women. There's nothing better than a pair of big naturals. All right. But fuck, there's a time and a place. I don't want to, there's kids in there, man. Book talk recommends. They're all fucking porno books. Every single one of the the fucking books in the book talk is all porn. I thought reading and literacy were making a comeback. Yeah, someone's coming while they're on their back. But it's not the joy of reading, all right? You know, I saw a TikTok that had like 200,000 likes, so millions of views and people going, yes, this is me, of just some chick talking about the books that she reads and, and saying like me when I see a really big paragraph in a book that I'm reading and then her just like skipping ahead and hundreds, thousands of comments going, oh my God, this is me. Listen, if you are skipping the plot, all right, to get to reading just the sex scenes, that's just me when I'm on Pornhub skipping the pizza delivery scene, all right? I don't I don't come on here and be like, oh, I watched the best movie last night and lie to you, all right? Because I've got more respect for you than that. So read your fucking porno books, all right? But show some respect to me. Don't don't lie to my face and tell me that
that you're reading about wizards and dragons and fairies and you care about the plot, all right? If the main character is shape-shifting and, and not using those powers to save the world but using them to elongate his cock, to fuck the barmaid or whatever, it's, you're, it's not a book, it's porn, all right? And, and you're reading, don't get me wrong, you're reading, but you're not reading a book, you're reading porn. In the same way where when, when I'm on Pornhub, I'm watching. I'm absolutely watching, but it's not a movie, yeah? It's porn. Can we agree on that? Anyway, J.K. Rowling is writing a new book. And she's writing a book about, how's this? For, for dudes who hate chicks. J.K. Rowling is writing a science fiction book based in the future. I can already see the first paragraph of J.K. Rowling's new book. Long, long ago, in the distant past, at the start of all of this, when it could have been nipped in the bud, like a preteen's breasts would be removed by an evil surgeon. Long ago, when the gender wars first started, a very famous freedom fighter, Jane Karen Rosing, spoke out against the gender authoritarians. But the general public, in a misguided but noble attempt at empathy and love, drowned out her voice, not knowing the repercussions that were to come. Now, in the year 2335, it is illegal to have a pussy that you were born with. You may only have one that was stitched onto you. <laughs> this is... The gender fascist future. I can't wait. I can't wait. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. All right. We're going to end it there, guys. Thank you very much for listening. Um, please do buy the merch, loosespears.com, Spears Pizza Parlor. You've got two episodes. This is one of them, I think. I don't know. Pre-orders close on the 30th in Australia. You do, you do the math. Loosespears.com. Best merch we've ever made. Super proud of it. I'm going to continue on Patreon right now. If you want more podcasts, you can check it out there. It's up right now and you get early access to all episodes. And yeah, thank you very much. I'm um, taking a big swing at YouTube. Please do like and comment on the videos. It really helps. Share them if you care, but mainly like and comment uh, because we're doing our big swing and I think it's going to work. I've done my theory. I've done my thinking. Now it's time to act like we have with this podcast. Thank you so much. Talk to you on Patreon now. Or if you don't support me, you fucking... I'll see you next Sunday. Have a shit one. Bye.